everybody. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. <laughs> Thank you once again. It's just a wonderful Sunday. Amen. How many are glad to be here today? Yeah. Better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. But before I start our new series, uh, What Shapes Us, um, can we put the slide up? Uh, the first one uh, before that. Yes. Um, on October 18 to 24, please pray for us. Pastor Eric and I will do a, a short scouting trip to the island of Palau. Amen. Can we give God the glory? Amen. How many Palawans in the house? Raise your hand. Woo! Amen. Um, Oya, one of our you know, sisters there, uh, we might be praying with the president of Palau. Amen? So pray for that. And then we're also going to go to Palau uh, Community College. We will introduce, or maybe we will do some pickleball mission trip. Right? <laughs> so we're going to have flyers and everything just to meet the locals and, every, and everything and uh, have connection with them. And hopefully we could have that heart and passion to reach the island of Palau. Because we believe Palau is important. We believe that God has a purpose for Palau. That will change the world. Amen. There will be mighty leaders will come out of that nation to send out to the nations of the world in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So thank you. Um, Thank you, Pastor Mark, for putting this slide for me. <laughs> so please pray for our life group leaders will be established in Palau, our worship team, evangelists, intercessors, administrators, and pastors. So please pray for our trip. Pray for safety that we will not, uh, uh, you know, get sick. But I know I'm going to gain weight a little bit, I think, you know, because there's a lot of good food there, seafood and everything. But most likely we were there to pray. We are going to go prayer walk. We're going to go a prayer drive. We're going to soak that island in prayer. Because without prayer, it ain't going to happen. Amen? So can we all bow down our heads and let's pray for our short uh, scouting trip in Palau. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for the beautiful island of Palau. Lord, we bless all of these people. We bless. We speak life and blessing to the people of Palau. We speak the power of God to all of them, and especially the young people of Palau. Lord, we pray, oh God, that they will know you, and they will have, uh, serve you with all of their hearts and with all of, uh, with all of their lives to you. So Holy Spirit, go before us in this short scouting trip. In Jesus' name, everybody say... Amen. But before that, man, how many are blessed with uh, Pastor Mark and Terry? Pastor Mark and Terry, can you please stand up? Can we just thank you for their leadership? Can we just give the Lord a hand for them? Amen. Come on. Pastor Mark and Terry, just an honor, you know, to, to, to be our leader and our pastors. We, we, Jen and I and all of us. Are blessed with you. Amen. So our topic, our new series is what shapes us. You know, I like to eat. That's why my shape is a little bit husky, right? But, you know, but I, I envy Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark is, uh, you know, and Pastor Mark is okay, right? He's a little bit vegetarian. So look at Pastor Mark. So you see the difference. So we're going to talk about what shapes us, okay? But there, there are two things that I need to co contrast today, okay? That's why the youth are here. I'm going to talk about social media. I'm going to talk about this. Amen. So, and then I'm going to talk about the word of God. So, these are the two things that, uh, that I'm going to talk about. And um, hopefully we could have something and learn from each other from that. Um, let's all stand up as we read God's word together. Let's go to the next slide, please. Everybody, let's all read it. One, two, three, go. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking. Correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Lord, we thank you for today. I ask for your Holy Spirit to speak through me and speak through us. Lord, we pray, Father God, for your presence today. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. Amen. Let's go to the next slide, please. This is our every nation. This is what we believe. We believe God has spoken to human authors in the scriptures. 
the 66 canonical books of the Old and New Testaments. The Bible is the only written, verbally inspired word of God and is self-attesting, unchanging, and without error in all it affirms as God's authoritative, infallible, and sufficient revelation for life, doctrine, and practice. The Bible is to be trusted and obeyed. So this is the 66 canonical books of the Bible. This is what we believe. But if you study more, there are other religions, they added more, by, more books on it, but we don't believe because we see it that some of those add-ons are, they believe for prayer for the dead. That they could still be, you know, after you die, you can still, they pray, 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 and they can go to, you know. The Bible says, when the rich man and Lazarus, you know, died, the rich man is already where? Suffering in hell. You know, this is, you know, and, and then the, uh, Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham, and the the rich man said, oh, Lord, this is so hot in here. Just dip the tongue up. It's so hot, you know, I mean, agony. Can, can, can I go back and warn my family? But Abraham said, you know, when someone's from the dead and tell them that this is what's going on, they're going to believe the gospel. But Abraham says, my son, even though a, a, a dead person coming to life and t- tell to warn uh, these people, if they don't believe the word of Moses, it's not going to happen. Amen? So that's why we, we only we stick to the 66 books of the canon scriptures. It's connected and it's solid. Amen? Now, if you want to go to study some more, please do so. Let's go to Israel. Yay! Ooh, that's me. It was two years ago. Look at my face there. It's very, very hot. Whew, it's about 100 degrees. That's like, I tried to smile, but uh, you know something like that. But you can see that, right? There's a, that's where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. And uh, man, I was like so blessed to be there. And uh, I was really shaking. Man, Lord, thank you, Lord, for being here. You know, it's like the Bible comes alive. The Bible is here. It's real in Jesus' name. Go to the next slide. And then I took a picture of that is the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. Next slide, please. Dead Sea Scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls, also called the Qumran Cave Scrolls, are a set of ancient Jewish manuscripts from the Second Temple period. They were discovered over a period of 10 years, between 1946 to 1956, at the Qumran Caves near Enfesha. Sorry for the words, okay? In the West Bank, on the northern shore of the Dead Sea. Created 3rd century BCE, 1st century CE, it means... I was studying the, what is B.C. and A.D. So B.C. means before Christ, okay? So it's about 200, 300 years before the birth of Christ. Now when you say A.D., some, some of us will go, oh, that's after death. It's not after death, okay? So <laughs> it is year of our Lord. So if you say 2015 after death, it's wrong. According to scholars, you should go A.D. 2015, Year of our Lord, 2015. Wow, so I learned that for that. So it's about 300 years uh, uh, was, uh, before uh, it was uh, written. Culture, Jewish, discovered 1946, 1947 to 1956. Material, parchment. Can you, I, I have a hard time. My way, how do you say this? I said papyrus, what? Papyrus. Okay, everybody. Papyrus. Man, you guys are awesome. Amen. And copper. Period, second temple period, place, Qumran Caves near In Fesha. Present location, Israel Museum, Jerusalem, Jordan Museum, and Amman. I thought it was Arman. I said it's going to be Arman, Amman. Yeah. Let's go. Let's look to the next slide. What, okay, it's now going to be personal. What shaping you? This, you know, our cell phone, right? I'm going to talk about today. What's shaping you? Is it? This or the Word of God. That's what I said, okay? We're going to have contrast. Now, we're going to play a little bit. Um, raise your hand, okay? I'm going to show you a picture. Raise your hand and tell me what social media do you see on this picture. Just raise your hand and then you're going to blow it out. Okay, anybody? Binge. Twitter or X. Raise your hand, anybody? Instagram. Facebook. LinkedIn, Pinterest, what else? Vimo. That's it? You got it? 
Huh? I think tel- Telegram, Facebook, right? So there's a lot. There's a lot. And then even the, I think TikTok is not there. There's a lot, you know, so. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Wow. You guys like this, right? The thumbs up, the heart, the angry, the, <laughs> the, the, you know. You know, <clears throat> there are some girls, okay? They're going to post a picture. Not much likes and everything. But when, you know, they started to show a little bit of shoulders. Wow. A lot of love. You know, like, and then they started to show more and more and more. And until, yeah, it's, it's there. And most of them are basing uh, their identity on Facebook. My mom started Facebook around six years ago. Elmer, how you do this? <laughs> okay, you go like this, this and that, man. But now he, she is a pro. Okay. <laughs> Have you seen this link? Whoa. Is my link working? Whoa. But the problem is when, he, when mom, happy birthday, Merry Christmas, her emoji is always the angry one. <laughs> mom, where's the angry one? I, because my eyes is very weak. You know, I just go like this. Uh. Man, but she is a Facebook savvy now, right? Amen? But church, everyone, it, it, when I was uh, sick and had that operation on my bypass operation uh, six years ago, my Facebook friend was not there. My other friends are not there. But when I woke up on that uh, eight hours surgery, who is holding my hand? My wife, honey, you did great. I know, really? Am I alive? I'm alive. I'm alive. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And the rest is history. Okay, we're going to go now to the, hmm, we're going to do some uh, minutes and percentage. Okay, this is Dr. Google. You know, Every Christmas, you, how many have Christmas tree at home, you know, every Christmas? And then you have uh, gifts and everything, and somebody gave to you. And Noah goes, when somebody gave a gift to him, I want to open it now, Dad. Can I open it? No, 24th. On the Christmas Eve, when the bell ring, you know, when the, when, when, you know, when it's 25, you're going to open it. No, it's something like that. So I got this from Pastor June Escosar, you know. It's like, what's that, right? It's like, you're excited. What's, what's the meaning of that? But anyway, what, let's go to the next slide. 142 minutes, uh, 143 minutes. What is this? Let's go to the next slide. It means 2 hours and 23 minutes. Let's go to the next slide. 2.5 hours per day spent scrolling through different platforms of social. You know, my phone is open. You know, my wife knows my password. No one knows my password. <laughs> Everybody knows my password. And one time he's going like this. Hmm. He opened it. She opened it. Honey. What am I in trouble? <laughs> what is this? You know, because my phone is locked. You know, all of the website that I'm going to visit, you know, all of, the, all of the apps. How come six hours on social media? Oh, let me see. Hon, it was the whole week. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. No, it's what uh, he doesn't believe me. But it, I found that it's really the whole week. So I'm spending around 45 minutes each day on social media. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I think the Lord saved me. You know, my phone saved me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the next slide. All right, teenagers, that's why you're here. Amen. Teenagers are the biggest users, especially teenage girls who spend nearly three hours a day on social media. Amen? And there's a lot of uh, things in there going on, so we pray for you guys. And then, uh, my daughter Ashley set up a time limit for Noah for his iPad, you know? This was five years ago. Man, Ate, why is time limit? You know, he's crying. Why you put time limit on it? Man, you need you too much iPad. Okay. Man, the following day, he was smiling, and there's no more complaint. So Ashley goes, what's my time? What, if what's happening? It's like you're on it and on it. Oh, I find a way to, <laughs> to remove your timer. 
he just uh, reset and reboot the, the, the iPad. And then, so the timer keep on refreshing, refreshing, and refreshing. Oh, my God. Man. So that's why I think Apple, uh, you know, fix it now. You know, when you set a time limit, it's, it's not going to work. Those refreshing and everything and uh, this and that. Amen. So what is shaping us? Okay, this is what's happening right now. We have to pray and see, Lord, God, help us on this, on this, on what's happening on our world right now. Amen? And I'm not saying that social media is bad. Not totally bad. <laughs> There's also good things, right? My BFF, uh, 1989, we could say, hey, what's up? Okay, birthday, uh, greetings, right? And somebody, I'm going to put scriptures on it. There's good things too. But if we are not careful, there are also negative things that can uh, affect each and every one of us. Let's go to the next one. 2.85 billion. Everybody knows this? Maybe? This is Dr. Google. 2.85 billion. How many people around the world right now? It's about maybe 7 billion, Pastor Mark? That estimate? 7 billion? So 2.85 billion, next slide please, are Facebook users. Wow, the influence of Facebook. Amen? Ooh, so that's a big chunk of people using Facebook and social. This is only Facebook. What about TikTok? What about LinkedIn? What about Telegram? What about the other social media? Okay, it's, we are in this thing, uh, church. So we need to pray, Lord, where is the balance as Christians? Amen? Let's go to the next slide, please. Just harmful is Social media, like what I said, there's a good thing, but there is also uh, things that can harm us. Now, look at this uh, next slide, please. This is uh, from um, uh, from uh, research on on uh, on the internet that I have researched. The cons of social media: inadequacy of your life or appearance. You know, I posted my regular picture. Yeah, I'm gonna try it because. I was encouraged by other, you know, when you have a nice picture, you post it, right? Ooh. Man, I posted mine. Man, only 10 likes. <laughs> oh, Over 10 likes. And then they even like this. Mm -hmm. But I found out that AI, oh, you guys do that too, right? You know the AI? And then it makes you younger and with muscles, right? <laughs> so I did it. You know, you, know, you, you play, right? You play. You're, whoa, whoa, I got 100 likes right away. And with a lot of press, wow, you look good, bro. You know, I know it's fake. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> right? You know, Facebook, you know, the social media is addicting. I was sitting down one time at church and, or in Bible study. My wife's going to go like this. <laughs> Facebook again. And some of you are doing Facebook right now while I'm preaching. You're okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, but sometimes it's just like it's natural now for us, right? Get our phone. You know, some of us have your phone in the bathroom, <laughs> in the kitchen, <laughs> washing clothes. Uh, how many? Uh, yeah, right? It's, it's like if your, if your uh, cell phone is not with you, it's like, man, I cannot live without it. Type on Mawar, my son Noah. <laughs> he was crying. Dad, this is, this is not life. Huh? This is not life. You have food. You have this and that. Oh, so what's your complaint? No internet. <laughs> oh, so I have to counsel him, you know, son, you know, during our time, during the 80s, we don't have power, you know, we don't have this and this and that, but we love each other. We go and play and enjoy our life. So let's go play, hide and go seek and play and do your things, you know, and then, yeah, we finally get into it and. He is good. Amen? Are you okay? Yes, All right, let's go. This one now is uh, one of the Christian universities do their study on this, okay? So this is now the, the one that I, we spoke about on the first part is the social media. So Lord, help us to balance ourselves. Let's go to the next one. 45%. What is this? Are you ready? Next slide. At least once a week reading their Bible. There's about 45% of Christians all over the world are reading their Bible once a week. According to studies, there's about 2.18 billion people, 
Christians around the world. So 45% of 2.18 billion, I'm not good in math, is what? Mathematicians? Maybe how many? 45%, half of it. So probably 1.2 1. 1. billion are, are, are this. Amen? Next slide, please. 12%. Let's go to the next slide. Once or twice a month reading their Bible. So 12% of 2.18 billion is probably one, man, about 100 million or 1.2 million people, uh, Christians are reading their Bible once or twice a month. Next, 9%. What is that? Let's move to the next slide. Several times a year. Okay, I'm going to clock in several times a year and this and that. So 9%, maybe another 900,000 Christians. Or no, nine, well, maybe 90, maybe 100,000, you know, million, or, you know, people. Several times a year. Let's go to the next one. 33% is seldom or never. Seldom, never is. Church, we need to spend time with God. Amen? What is shaping you? Is it anger? Is it depression? Is it gossip? Is it the, uh, anxiety? Let us be shaped by the word of God. Amen. Amen? And we go back to our text this morning. All scripture, say all scripture. scripture. It's God breed and it's useful for teaching. It teaches us. Oh, that's how I do it. Oh, that's how I'm going to deal with depression. Oh, that's how I'm going to raise my children. Oh, that's how I'm going to win this battle. Oh, this is how I'm going to walk on the right path. It teaches you and I. Number two, rebuking. You know, there's, sometimes we, it's correcting us. There, 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 we cannot twist the hand of God, amen? No, we can make exceptions, you know, God is love. Let's forget the other verses. We cannot do that, amen? Evangelist Billy Graham says, there are some, peop there are some people who are afraid to offend people and not afraid to offend God. We cannot twist the word of God because the word of God is stable, it's strong, it's there. I've been, how many have been rebuked by the word of the Lord? A lot of, don't raise your hand, but man, I've been rebuked with the word of the Lord a lot of times. I thought I did uh, the right thing, but the Holy Spirit, and I read the Bible, oh no, I'm sorry, Lord. It's corrected me. Oh, that's rebuking, correcting, and training in? Righteousness. What is, what's the meaning of righteousness? Mean, righteousness, righteousness means you are choosing? Right. right, yes, it's to do right. Because when you are in the Bible, you're going to do right. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. How can you do good works and you are not equipped? What will happen if you're not equipped? If you're going to do good works... You're going to give glory to yourself. Oh, I did gave this. Oh, I serve. It's me. You know, I serve in the kids' church. I, see? I sang on the music team. I. Because you are not equipped. You are not founded in the, in, in, you know, in the righteousness of God. But when we serve and when we have good works in our lives, everything will go back to God. Oh, glory to him. Amen? Oh, glory to God. Because he's the one that is shaping me to do all of these things to bless many, many people. Let's go to the next slide. Let's all read it. Everybody go. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You know, Pastor Rice Brooks, what will happen? Okay, everybody, what will happen if we have television in our forehead? Can you imagine that, right? You see, oh, oh what's that, you know? It's going to be, you know, but God sees it. God knows our thoughts. God knows our hearts. So it judges. Uh, the one that judges is God. That's why, church, we have to take time in spending time with the Lord. We have to take time in reading God's word. 
we have to take time and spend time with him to grow our relationship with him so that we will be thoroughly equipped. I know some of us, man, pastor, I'm, I have so much, uh, I, I work, you know, I have this, I have kids, I have this and that, you know. But one thing that you could do is at least start with five minutes inside your car, play a, a Christian music and play audio Bible. How many have audio Bible? I have audio Bible. I like it. You know, I, I have the, you could have a, you know, you could have different accents on it too. I have the, uh, I, you know, I, I have the American accent, but I love the British accent. Yeah, and the Lord was there. For God so loved the world. That he, you know, I like that accent because sometimes there's no anointing. No, just joking. <laughs> I love that. But man, I, I sleep with, I, I, can sometimes I, I fall asleep with the Bible, reading Psalms and everything. with the audio. Do everything we can to grow in the Lord. Amen. Do, we got to do it. Just do it. Be, be filled with the Lord. Be filled with God. Be shaped by the word of God. Love the word of God. Memorize a little Memorize at least a little bit of, you know, of, 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 of verses. You know, if you have a hard time memorizing verses, the shortest verse, verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. That's it. It's good for you. You know, even those small things. Start with small things because when you start with small things, you're going to go bigger things. Amen? Come on, church. We need to dig deep. Lord, we want you. We need you, Lord. You need to be strengthened. We need to have that good foundation so that we can be a blessing to our loved ones, that we could be a blessing to our workplaces, that, we, that the, the light of God will shine upon each and every one of us. And they will see what's the difference, what's, what's in you that's so different. And then that's the time that you're going to share. Jesus is king. I serve a mighty God, and I want you to know him. I'm going to share the good news to you. Amen? Lastly, as uh, two more slides. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Second Peter 1, 20, 21, King James Version. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It's not somebody just interpreted the Bible, okay? It's not just a soap interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. It's not the will of man. But a holy man of God spake as they moved by the what? By the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. And King James Bible is authorized version. Okay, I have to go authorized version. Because if it's not authorized, it's not legit. I'm just joking. All right, but are we here? So it's not just a myth. It's not just, uh, just uh, you know, it's on my mind and everything. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Last slide. Psalm 19, 7, 11. The law of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul. Sometimes you're like a Friday, right? You're like, you got hit by a lot of problems, a lot of things. And sometimes you're going like this. Oh, you know, if you don't spend time with God, right? But when you just read the word of God, some, wow, you know, you revive. The word of God revives you. Sometimes you're feeling down. Sometimes you feel defeated. But when you read the promises of God, what happened now? Wow, this muscle just like strength. Coming upon you because that is the word of God. It encourages you. It strengthens you. It, it gives you power from the inside because the word of God is, is living and strong. Amen? It's the food. It's our spiritual food that keeps us going as Christians. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. How many have joy in the heart? Amen? Read the word of God. It, you will have joy. Remember, uh, thank you, uh, Brother Jack, Parry Jack, you know, for leading. Watch. I have joy. Oh, right? It's nice to have a joyful heart. Have you seen somebody? Negative person. Right? You go to a workplace and then what's wrong? God, right? I'm, I'm just defeated right now. But when, when you go to a workplace, how are you? Hey, what's up, bro? Man, full of life. I'm alive, you know. I have the joy of the Lord. Is there anything I could pray for you? Is there anything I could do for you, bro? I'm here for you. And tell me anything that I could, you know, you need help, right? You're positive. You're full of life. You know, the people around you will say, wow, you know, what's in you? What's in there? 
I want to have it. Oh, I invite you to live in the sun. Our service is Sunday at 10 a.m., you know, behind Megabyte. You know, and your life will never be the same. What? <laughs> amen. Amen. We say amen. Yeah? Amen. Giving light to the eyes, okay? If darkness goes in here, what will happen to your life? You're going to pull up darkness. But if you fill your eyes with the word of God, you fill it with good things, man, your light. See, remember Jesus says, you are the, you know, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. They will see the goodness of God in your life. And people will, will follow, man, I want to have what you have. Help me to follow Christ. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. Amen? Did we learn something today? Are we blessed? Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Let's all stand up. And I would like to call our music team. And as we just, uh, just can we just lift up our hands and, and, and uh, as we, the music team, let's just lift up our hands to the Lord and just surrender everything. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. Lord, help us to be shaped by your word and not by things of the flesh. Father, we thank you that you love us. Father, we thank you. Lord, help us to balance our lives. It's a different ballgame. It's a different things going on in our world today, especially in this digital age. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you help us to live for you. Holy Spirit, help us, sanctify us, help us to know you more. We thank you, Father God, for your love and grace. Put your heart to him this morning. Lord, help me to balance my life. I might be doing things that are not of yours, and that's shaping me, Lord. Forgive me on that area. Change me. Change my heart, oh God. Maybe you're here, and it's not settled in your heart. That when you die, even now or tonight, you are not sure going to heaven. And it's still a struggle. Like, man, I don't know. But you can be sure today. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. All you need to do is to open up your heart and let him in as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, just lift up your hand high so I can see that see that hand. I see that hand. Praise God. You can throw it. Any more hands? I want to follow Jesus. I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you, Lord. I see that hand. Pray this prayer for those people who lift up their hands. Heavenly Father, let's all pray this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, dying on the cross for my sin. I thank you and I receive him in my heart as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for the blood of Christ who cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I thank you as I receive you, Jesus, in my heart and my name is now written in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Change my heart, oh God. Come on, sis. Make it ever true. That's our prayer. Change my heart, oh
thank you this morning. Thank you for your word that, Lord, thank you for your word that will shape us. Help us, Lord, today as we leave the church where our life's not going to be the same again. Lord, we're going to spend time reading your word. We're going to spend time spending, uh, uh, spend time spending with you. Lord, we pray, oh God, for a different spirit. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to be filled each and every one that's in our brothers and sisters that are here. Lord, I pray, Father God, to help us to seek you every day, oh God, and to love you. Help us, Lord God, to love your word that will shape us in the coming years and days. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. Let's give a shout. Have a great week, everybody.